All right, let's look at compound interest using Excel or Google Sheets. And I think I'm going to model using Google Sheets, although both Excel and Google Sheets are very, very similar for this problem. You have a trust fund from Uncle Nick from the day you were born. He deposited $5,000 into a trust fund in your name that yields 6% APR compounded annually. How much is in the trust fund when you turn 18? How much when you are 18 years, 10 months? And how much when you turn 19? How much when you turn 60? Plot the growth of the investment up to age 19. Plot the growth up to age 60. So I'm coming to Google Sheets and I'm going to open a new sheet. So the first thing that I want to do is just put in um, some of the information that we have for this problem. And so I'm going to come over here and start typing. So I know the present value, what I'm starting with is $5,000. The rate, that's my R, and that was going to be 6%. So I can type that in as 6%. And just like your calculator can handle that percent, so can Google Sheets or Excel. And if we just leave it in as 6%, it'll convert it to a decimal when it uses it in the calculation, which is really handy. And then the N, which is the number compounds, the number of compoundings was going to be annually. So that's a one. And then the, let's see, the time, P, that's going to be one year as well. And then we want to use sheets to help us figure out what's going to be happening with this account over time. So we want to know the person's age, so your age, and then every year we'll take a look at the account. So the first thing that happens, and uh, we'll have start a year, and then we can put like end of year. Okay, so for the first year, you start off when you're when you're very first born, you're actually zero years old for that whole first year. And at the start of the year, you got, it looks like $5,000. And then at the end of the year, you're going to have a bigger amount. Let's see if I can show both of these. So we are going to want to use the A equals PV times one plus R over N to the NT power. And we listed out the variables for each of those values in this formula. And so what I want to do is kind of plug them in here. So it's going to look like this, 5,000, one plus, and my rate was 0 0.06. N is one because it's annually. I'm looking at my problem to remind myself, compounded annually, so N is one. And then that puts a one for the exponent and then I want to evaluate at a bunch of different years. So I want to just go ahead and look at every year, especially since I need to plot the growth up to that age. I want to look at every year. So I'll just find out each year. And Google's really good at this, trust me. So I want to figure out each year like this. So this, this will be for the first year. And then that'll give me... 5,000 times, it looks like 1.06. Remember doing this for the for the first compound interest problem we did? And that'll give us our value for the first year. And then for the second year, remember, we'll just take whatever the A that we come up with and multiply it by that 1.06 again. Every year, we'll just multiply whatever our current balance is times that 1.06. I remember we saw that a couple pages back right here at the top this, where we were multiplying by that same part in the parentheses every time. Our rate was not changing, our number of compoundings was not changing, and so on. And so it's going to look a lot like this problem here. So let's take a look. Right now we have our 5,000 times our 1.06. So we want to calculate this piece so that we can multiply by it over and over and over. That's where we're headed. So I need to insert some lines. So I'm going to click right on the digit that says five and insert one above. I need a few lines. So insert one above and maybe one more will do it. 
insert one above. And now I can see my my formula, which is beautiful because then I can look at, I want to calculate that, so I need R divided by N. I'm just going to write, remember on the left side, it's just I'm typing in values. Um, Google's not going to do anything with it. It doesn't do anything unless I do an equal sign, which I want to do right here. So equals, and I want to click on my R, which was the 6%, and I want to put slash for divide, and then click on my N, which was 1, and then push enter. So I have 0 0.06. So now that's this piece right here, 0 0.06. No big surprise. Now I need to add 1 to it. So here I'll put 1 plus R over N. Again, that's just a label, so I know what I'm calculating. And now here's where Google's going to do the work because I'm putting in equals 1 plus I already calculated R over N, and it's right here, so I'm just going to click on it, so it'll use that 0.06 that I already found, and I'll push enter. So now I have 1.06, so now I have this much right there. 1 plus R over N, remember I should multiply it by this exponent, even though it's a 1 and I know nothing will change. I'm going to put it here just so you can see it. You'll need this for your project as well, so I'll just show you here and then again when we do the project. So 1 plus r over n, and to the, I'm going to show with a caret just like we do it on our calculator, to the, and then it's the n times t, and so I'll tab over, and that reminds me, I kind of need to take that n times t, so I'll insert one line here, and then I'll say nt is what I want to put here, and they'll say equals and click on my n times click on my t value and push enter there's a one I kinda expected that and then we'll do equals for this calculation I already have the one plus r over n that's right here so I'll click on it and then I just need to go to the nt which is there push enter 1.06. So this 1.06 right here is really this 1.06 right here. And now all I have to do is multiply that by my balance every year and it'll give me the amount with interest. And that's what I need to do in this last cell here. So I'm going to say equals. We're getting really close to some really cool Google stuff. So hang in there. Equals 5,000. Click on it times, put in the asterisk, and then the 1.06, and push enter. So at the end of year zero, I will have $5,300. And then I'm coming down to the next year, and that's going to be, how old will you be? You will turn one, and then the start of the year, you're going to have this ending year from the previous year. So instead of typing in all that again, I'm just going to say equals and click on the 5300. And then I'm going to do tab because I want to come over a space so I can figure out the end of the year. Now this one I've got to calculate carefully because I'll show you why in a second. Um, so I want to do equals. This is the start of the year balance. I need to calculate interest on it. So I'm going to calculate that number times the 1.06 and then when I'm here on the 1.06 there's an F4 button on your on your keyboard and if you push that it puts dollar signs around your B8 it put dollar B dollar 8 now if your computer won't put the dollar signs on there don't worry just go to you can just type them so I'm putting dollar B dollar eight. I just typed it in. It does the exact same thing as the F4 button, but the F4 button's more convenient. So whichever you've got, you want yours to look like mine. B12 because I clicked on it times and then B8 and then I pushed the F4 button to make it dollar B dollar eight. And I'll show you why again in a minute. And push enter. So Here's what you should have. A 1 is just a 1 typed in. The 5300 is coming from here, so it's an equals reference to here. So this cell has to look like what I did. If I come up to the top, click on the cell itself, and come up here, you'll see 
that it's referencing this C11 in this case. And there should be an equal sign in front of it so that it's taking the value from the line before. We definitely need that. If you do tab, this one has an equal sign. It's using, using the start of the year balance and it's multiplying by the interest calculation part. And you've got to have it with the dollar $B, dollar eight. So here's the neat part. Just push enter after you've kind of explored there. You want to select all the way across these values here. Go to the middle of a cell, not to the corner or anything. Go to the middle of the cell, push down on your mouse, drag to the right until you've selected the cells that, that are on this row. Let go of your mouse and then see that kind of square on the bottom right? You're going to go there and you want to find that cursor like that where it's a big skinny plus. It's not an arrow. So wait until you have that big skinny plus and then push down with your mouse and drag down. Now, so far you really don't know what's going on, but this is the cool part about Google because, and Excel does it the exact same way too. Um, what it's doing is dragging down so that here we did a C11. This one will do C12, which is the next row. So it bumps down one every time. And this one does C13, C14, C15, 16. It increases one every time. Looking at these, here we go B11 times B8. This one's B12 times B8 with, this, with the dollar signs. B13 times B8, B14 times B8. It increased the B14, it'll, that, it's increasing that reference, but not this one here. It's static, it's only going to refer to this spot here. It's not going to drag down one every time because as you can see, that'll be a problem. So when you drag like that, it does all the calculating for you. We have a problem over here though, it didn't do the numbers right, and Google's notorious for that. It doesn't know to increase it, so we have to show it a pattern. So I'm going to select by clicking in the middle again, drag down so that I select the zero and the one, go to the bottom right, look for that black plus, and now drag that down. And now it'll, it'll follow the pattern that it saw, and it gives me zero and it increases. Well, I needed to know about 19. So I'm going to take two more rows because I didn't get enough. So go to the middle of the 15, push and hold your mouse, drag to the right until you select a two rows. Go to the bottom right and drag down. Now I know we need to go to 60, so I'm going well beyond 60. Oh, and I happen to get it right. So row 71 will get, if you have your, your Excel sheet matching mine exactly, row 71 is where you need to go to. If not, you can just adjust and go, um, yeah, Google doesn't like to adjust. So if you went too far, select a row and you can just delete, that's fine. But so I have his, his your amounts in your account up to different ages. Here's when you're 18, here's how much will be in your account, 19, 20, on and on up to 60. And remember we needed 18, 19, and 60. There's one problem here that's really bugging me. I don't know if it's bugging you, but this is supposed to be money, but there's too many decimal places showing. So I'm selecting all those cells. And when you select, remember, you just go to the center of a cell and click and hold and then drag down. I'm dragging to the end of all those. And then I'm just going to push this format as currency button. So it'll change it all to dollars and cents. That looks so much better. And now I can see how much money you'll have at any point in your life.